Alrighty guys, we are back on Fog Entertainment with some money heist career. First of all, I need to say apologies for the lack of uploads. It's been a while since we reviewed episode 9 of this show. We, we could have robbed the Mint, honestly. We could have actually went in with the Professor's team and robbed the Mint for how long it's took us between episode 9 and episode 10. So again, apologies for the delay, but we're back now and we will be reviewing Money Heist Korea episode 10 today. It's been a while. I actually had to go back and rewatch it because it's been so, so long since I rewatched it the first time. I was like, nah, you know what? I can't do a review without rewatching it. So I went back, I rewatched it. I've seen this episode now like four times or something like that. A lot, a lot of times. So uh, hopefully this should be a good and knowledgeable review. So we start again as you do in this show with flashbacks. And I, I love flashbacks. I think if flashbacks implemented correctly can add so much to a show. I don't really like when they're constantly thrown in. I think I like the way Money Heist Korea does them though. They normally just have one like one big long one at the start. Sometimes you know, to like open up the episode. Sometimes you'll get like a shorter flashback during an episode. But more often than not, it's like just like you know the opening. The opening five minutes is essentially a flashback, and so for me it adds a lot and it, it does improve the quality of the show. But we do start with. Uh, Wu Jen is sitting in her car, she's on the phone talking about a custody battle that she's having with her ex-husband for their daughter. Her mother's mental state is getting brought up, so they're trying to use her mother to try and like it basically discredit her mother's alibi and you know try and make it out as if Wu Jen would not be fit to have the daughter because she's got a sick mother and she isn't really capable of you know looking after her uh, but then we got a big shunt and it's the professor so the professor and he's been like stalking Wu Jen over this time like well not stalking but he's been keeping an eye on Wu Jen because he's going to try and use her as part of the operation this is two months before the heist on the mint begins and he purposely crashes into the back of Wu Jen Jen. She seems pretty angry, but she just wants the details so she can get the insurance claim. But the professor is trying to talk to her. She's like, "You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be leaving. You know, you, you can't really leave here. You could be hurt. You're not really safe to drive." He offers her a drink at a new cafe, and that is the cafe that he is opening up. He takes her back to the cafe for coffee, but they end up having sex. So he what he he <laughs> he offered her a sweet treat, and you know things got a lot sweeter. So. She wakes up the next day and she like escapes and um, she says that she will call him back. She's just busy and that uh, she does want to try the coffee because she never got to try any this time. So, I mean, pretty good opening flashback scene here showing how the professor and Wu Jin met. Then we cut to current time. Wu Jin is currently visiting the professor at his cafe. She wants to apologise for pretty much just how she accused him in the last episode of potentially having something to do with the heist. Uh, but he isn't there and she just knocks on the door and goes to do a 180 to her car. Then we see the professor driving by. He drives past Wu Jin. He isn't going to have anything to do with Wu Jin. But then Wu Jin falls. I guess it's maybe just a stress being worked too hard. She falls in the middle of the street and the professor rushes out of his car to go and look after the woman that he has pretty much fallen in love with. And we get Tokyo narrating this saying how the professor and Wu Jin should never have met again, but the fact that they did, you know, threw the professor's whole plan into jeopardy. So, I mean, I like this. It was good. And we, then we see the professor you know, basically help her into the car. Then we, we see the North, the, we see the Korean congressmen and the, they're basically talking about what they can do to prevent and try and they talk about maybe rescheduling the summit, but that gets told that's a bad idea and and then they try and cut the communications that the men are having with uh, the outside world but they can't do that because if they do that then then they'll also be cutting off their own internet and communications too however then they come up with like some sort of scheme that they're going to try and control the media they're going to pay the media off to not report positively on anything that the professor's team is doing in the heist and you know i don't know if this was like a nod i don't know if they're paying hobby to real life here how like you know the media is bought and controlled in real life well you know they're essentially doing it 
in this show so i mean that was a kind of a nice nod there if that is what they were going for maybe it wasn't but you know if it was then pretty cool uh we then see the professor he is talking with tokyo and i don't know what happened like but tokyo's boobs have grown massively here i don't know if she's wearing a push-up bra or with just her outfit but i, I did notice that man as, as soon as this scene started i was like holy shit uh but the professor talks to them and he says that he thinks they're going to push the summit forward and his calculations are they're going to push it forward by three days and then the professor basically tells Tokyo that she needs to get her back into the mint as soon as possible. We then go to Wu Jin who's in the hospital. She's been visited by her daughter and her mother and they, they say that she was brought in by some man but she doesn't know who and I believe she then thinks maybe it was the professor. We then go inside the mint. Berlin is telling all the hostages how he is going to give them the three million if they stay and work with them and cooperate with them. But of course the director, young men, just like, <laughs> he co completely disregards this and he, he just like overreacts and basically shouts and demands that none of the hostages that agree to this deal because the professor's team is lying and that they're not going to give them any money and this kind of just like pisses off the professor's team uh, and then we get Anne she tells the, the Yun Min that he pretty much has got himself fired anyway because Yun Min was basically saying anyone who stays to help this this crew will be fired but Anne says look at your actions look what you've done already since we've been in the mint you've got someone shot you've lied you've done this you've done that you put us at risk so she kind of just owns them here and says that you know you're going to be fired anyway so you may as well <laughs> you need the money uh then see a flashback the professor then tells his team that they need to keep hostages and that they will offer each individual 3 million won that stay behind. Uh, the team don't seem too happy about this. Nairobi says that if 10 people decide to stay behind, that's going to be 30 million won. Denver asks the professor, do they really need to give them money? He thinks that the, the, the team will just feel, uh, not the team, the, the hostages will feel inclined to stay out of like fear and safety. And he says there's a name for this. And then Rio's like, oh yeah, sometimes you get you can get close to people in situations like this. He calls it Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> and then Denver and Rio are agreeing. Uh, <laughs> Moscow, no not Moscow, Oslo says he's seen that movie. I didn't even know it was a movie. Uh, and then <laughs> Denver asks Rio, is it a mental illness? And then Moscow interrupts and goes on some big speech about how it's like a psychological problem. <laughs> and everyone's like listening to Den Moscow and they like they can't believe that Moscow's just like explained what it is. So he says it's like a psychological problem that you know, you feel when you're in like certain situations like this that make you have like an attachment uh, and have like a close relationship and bond to certain people like that. So, I mean, that's a pretty, I thought it was pretty funny here how you don't really expect Moscow to know this and he just comes out with it. Uh, the professor's like, that's right. And that he says that once they are offered three million, they will, the hostages will want to succeed. So they'll want the professor's team to succeed with their plan and then escape with the money. And uh, Berlin adds, of course, and and they will become accomplices their self. So that's kind of like the game plan. We then see the professor's team, they sit down with everybody in the mint and they discuss whether they want to stay as a hostage and get three million or if they want to leave. Um, we see the, the Berlin speaking with the director and the director's like, I've got a perfect idea. You could hide the three million in the mint. They would never expect that. Then Berlin calls him a dumbass. It's like, how did you even get your job? I mean, come on. Of course, they're going to find the money in the mint. As soon as this is over, like they're going to like, even Berlin says they're going to search this place every nook and cranny so you can, how could you possibly leave three million in the mint and, and expect to just walk in one day and grab it you know it's never going to happen uh you know the, the director is such a dumbass but he wants to know how they get the money but berlin say they can't tell them then he eventually says that once this is all over they will deliver the money via box outside their house so that's what i think the director's the only one that gets told this um we see Nairobi speaking with the guy that's printing the money. I believe his name is uh, Choi Myung. But before she can even like try and get him to stay, he he just decides that he wants to stay. He's like, no, I'm, I'm, you're the best boss I've ever had. You know, for the first time ever, I'm enjoying my job. I am going to stay. Um, and 
doesn't really make up her mind, but she kind of says, to, she kind of like mocks Rio for being alone now that um, Tokyo's gone, and he's, but then she says, no, I forgot, that, that, that crush was only one-sided, so uh, Rio's not too happy, uh, and then we get, you basically, all the, all the characters, all the relevant hostages are, you know, speaking with other members of the professor's team, if they're going to stay, or if they're going to not, then it gets to the decision time, and they split them up. They go right. People who are staying on the left, people who are leaving on the right. And <laughs> one of the guys turns around and says to the director, "Oh, you know, to leave this side, you're on the wrong side." But then the director looks at him as if he's a loser. So this guy thought the director wanted to leave, and he'd accidentally picked the wrong side. But in reality, the director is a greedy bastard, and he wanted to stay for the money. But I actually don't agree with this. If I was the professor's team, after all the shit the director has pulled, I would not have gave him the option. I would have just sent him out as a hostage. But then again, you could argue that because he's so sneaky, perhaps it would be better to keep him inside so that he can't tell, you know, the, the authority outside what's happening because I feel like he would be I feel I feel like if he did get outside he'd be the he'd be the one to like basically go over every single little detail in order to try and get the professor's teams caught. So you know it's like you can't really trust them inside the mint but maybe you trust them to have them more inside the mint where you can see them rather than outside the mint. So I guess it is a, a difficult decision but they do split them up and then they decide who is leaving and who's not. Eventually Denver and Mi Sun arrive. Uh, Denver says sorry we're late Mi Sung is going to stay. This pisses off Moscow. He pulls Denver to one side and starts arguing. It's like, you can't be with her. You can't be in a relationship with her. She's a hostage. Denver gets a bit defensive and he's like, no, no, we're, we're in love and we're going to, you know, we're, we'll look after you, dad. We'll give you, we'll give you grandchildren. You'll grow old. And, and then Moscow says, I bet you she told you she isn't interested in the money and she just wants to stay. And this is exactly what happened during the, during the talks. It was Denver speaking with Mi Song and she told him that she didn't want the money but she wanted to stay to be with him and then he revealed his name to her. But Moscow knew this. How did Moscow know this? Because he tells Denver that's how he met his mother, that he was robbing a bank and Denver's mother basically did the exact same thing that Mi Song did to Denver here and <laughs> Denver calls it Stockholm Syndrome and Moscow's crying because he doesn't want his son to potentially get caught here and you know live the same sort of life that he did you know grew up with a woman and then she changes her mind later down the line and kind of resents him for being like the robber that he is and Mos Moscow's very very upset here and uh, so, you know it was, it was a cool scene and they both kind of cry as well so uh, yeah then we see Anne and Nira Nairobi and Nairobi talks about you know tr <laughs> she tried to kill her but it was not personal so uh, a couple of episodes ago when Nairobi tried to kill her but that's it then we see the uh, we see Wu Jin she meets up with the professor she thanks him for, you know, taking her to the hospital and she says she apologises. She says she would still like to go on that romantic train journey to Russia if he is still willing. But she sees that he's packing up and he basically says that he's he's kind of selling the cafe and that he is planning to leave. But then he promises her that, you know, they will go on this train journey. So uh, the professor... Even though he knows that he can, he's telling her that he, he wants to, but he just can't because obviously she will know that he well he's got he has to escape, you know, after the after they get out the mint he has to leave. So he, he knows that he can never go on this journey with her, but he promises her that they will do it together in a few days once he manages to sell the business, but that is a lie. But he wants to, you know, it's weird. The professor really wants to, but he just can't. And um, then we see them going for, like, a walk, and, like, they're hugging and they're embracing, and they're on this bridge. So originally she was, like, going to walk away, but this is, like, when the professor, like, runs after and grabs her and says, no, look, I promise I will take you. We'll go on this train journey, and uh, they want to be romantic, and they want to be together. But while the professor chases after... Wu Jin, Tokyo is narrating in the background, so the professor catches up, he embraces Wu Jin with a hug, but while he's doing this, there's a really, really good quote, and I, I think this is an epic quote to be fair, and uh, Tokyo is quoting it, and she says, quote, No matter how perfect a plan is, it doesn't always go exactly as calculated. The professor was well aware of that, because plans are carried out by imperfect human beings who are driven by their conflicted emotions. 
But what he didn't know is he could be driven by those conf same conflicted emotions as well. End of quote. And yeah, I thought that was just a great quote there. So he had a perfect plan, but basically the moral of the story is here, no matter how perfect the plan is, it doesn't matter because plans are being carried out by humans and humans aren't perfect. So the professor had this perfect plan, but he let his emotions get the better of him. He let his feelings for Wu Jin get the better of him, and it ends up putting the entire plan and putting himself in to jeopardy. So I, I thought this was amazing here. During, the, so they're, having, they're talking back at his cafe, and he mentions, that they're talking about his family and his dad, and he hasn't really ever spoken about his dad, but the professor then tells Wu Jin that, his father was sick towards the end of his life and that he had dementia too. So dementia too, as in he had the same thing as Wu Jin's mother had. And we don't notice it here, but this is basically what gets the professor caught. We then see Denver and Berlin having a conversation. Berlin brings up the, now Denver brings up the point that didn't Berlin rescue a woman from a camp and didn't that make him happy? Uh, Berlin tells Denver to, you know, do, do what he wants, do what he feels is right for him, but Berlin says he regrets, you know, getting in a relationship with, um, you know, the, the woman that he rescued. Then we see, um, what we see the, uh, what's his name? Uh, it's it's Mewhook. Yeah, we see Mewhook. He's like tied up. He's trying to escape. He's hasn't done a good job of it. Um, and then we see, uh, I cannot remember the name of the new people. I honestly, it's, it's beginning to bother me, but um, the new woman that Soul, I, I believe her name is Soul. I think it is Soul, the, the woman that the, the the Berlin rescued, I think her name is Soul. Uh, she comes in and she takes away any objects that can be used by Mewhook to escape. So he's basically stuck there. Then the professor meets back up with Tokyo and um, Berlin's crew and he tells him, right, now, now's the time. We have to go. We have to get you back inside. And he tells Tokyo that... It's going to be moved up by three days. So this is it. When they start, they're going to release the hostages. Back inside the mint, Berlin tells uh, Tokyo and Narabi, Nairobi that this is this is it. Tokyo's coming back in. They have to release the hostages. And Tokyo's going to make her way back in while the hostages are being released. Um, this seems to annoy Rio. He thinks that they're putting, he thinks they're putting Tokyo in danger. He says that they should just let Tokyo be on the outside she's done her part you know she's safe now it's a suicide mission but berlin says no this is part of the mission and she says he says that tokyo will tr attempt to get inside the mint again whether or not they do release the hostages so by not carrying through the plan he says that they're putting tokyo's life in more danger rio says rio basically doesn't like berlin for this and he's 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 saying that it's part of him his agenda and that his um like you know north korean bullshit agenda and that he said if anything bad happens to tokyo he'll kill him the, the berlin's like what would you know a posh you know south korean kid you wouldn't know anything about this or about dying and being willing to sacrifice everything to follow through the plan nairobi then has to try and like um, you know separate them and stop this coming to blows. Then we see Denver and he basically backtracks on everything he said with Me Song. So he's trying to do what his father told him, and maybe the advice from Berlin. He he wants to he wants Me Song to leave, so he tells her to leave, and he's, he basically accuses her of just wanting the money and just using him because she broke up with the director and then she slaps him and she's she decides that she's not going to stay anymore she's going to leave as part of the hostages and then we see the hostages leaving the, so the, the deadline for the hostages is arriving they are being led out the building We've got berlin standing in front of the men and the hostages are being you know walk they're walk they're being walked out basically escorted out by berlin uh, there's two like single files but then we look at like there's this like communications fan that's parked outside the mint and tokyo is like she's like suited up and she's on a bike and while the hostages are leaving we see to tokyo like bursts out the back door of this truck on a bike and makes her way to the mint she starts driving towards the mint that's a really cool scene and then we see soul who is the, the leader of berlin's group she's like using these remote control that looks like I, I don't know, it looks like, um, what do you call those things that you, you, you can, you're like, I have, fuck, what do you call those things that you, I can't remember, those, like, helicopter things, I can't believe I'm, 
drones, drones. She's like using these drones, and she's flying them in front of to like behind Tokyo, but in front of like so she's using them as like a shield between Tokyo and potentially anyone trying to shoot Tokyo. So she's using the, the, the drones to try and block and shield Tokyo from the bullets, and we see that the 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 congressman tells uh tells them to start shooting and the guy's like oh no we can't shoot what about the hostages he says doesn't matter so the hostages are running out while tokyo is driving towards the men and they start shooting at tokyo but the, some of the some of the drones take the bullets and then we get the crew the professor's team inside the men they start like shooting into the air you know to like pretend that they're trying to fire back you know in order to cover tokyo and try and buy tokyo sometime and then tokyo does like a, a big stunt <laughs> up the up the stairs, heading to the mint, and uh, also Mi Sung at the same time decides she doesn't want to leave, and she does a one eight and starts running back to the mint. Denver sees her, he runs out and grabs Mi Sung. So we've got Mi Sung and Denver running back into the mint. We've got Tokyo doing like this massive like <laughs> flip on her bike, and we go into like slow mo, and then the camera like pans to what everybody's currently doing. It's another really good scene. Uh, Rio then dives and he like tackles Tokyo off the bike and they safely crash to the floor on top of each other. Um, Mi Sung and, and Denver are reunited. We see that the mint doors close while Berlin and Moscow are like you know exchanging fire to try and um, you know cover the group. Then the doors close and, and everyone is like you know welcoming Tokyo back. They're like oh you did it Tokyo gives Berlin some of his medicine and Berlin is confused where he got where she got that from. We then see Moscow looking at Denver and uh, Mi Sung. He doesn't approve and he like walks off and Denver thinks that. Moscow has basically, you know, fallen out of him and that Moscow has taken, um, you know, taken it bad that him and Mi Sung are still together. But it turns out Moscow actually got shot. So one of the bullets ricocheted off Tokyo's bike and hit Moscow and he's like bleeding out and he crawls into the bathroom. And we just see him start bleeding, and he starts bleeding out. So doesn't look good for Moscow. Uh, he's literally laying in a pool of blood by this stage. Then we get Wu Jin. She goes back to visit her mom, and she tells her mom that she needs any information she can remember on the man she's dating, uh, Jai Tae. Um, then her mother can't really remember. Her mother's like trying to think, trying to think, and then she says, "I, I remember I seen him once." outside the door uh, when you weren't there. So that, that time when the professor kidnapped um, Woo Jin's partner, the mother did actually look at the window and see him. And then because Woo Jin knew that her partner, um, Miu Hook, was suspecting him, she goes to like the the uh, identification place where Mew Hook was to try to see if she can like you know gather the information on what he was trying to get and then we cut to Mew Hook and he actually manages to escape so he escapes he escapes the, the place where he's been tied up and he makes a run and then we see the professor and Berlin's team chase after him then back inside the uh, identification pay, uh, place where they were running prints Wu Jin gets the documents and she finds out that the professor is actually the man that she's been dating and she can't believe it she's devastated um, devastated sorry <laughs> I don't know what that word was I said uh, then we see Mew Hook he's running away he gets into like a bit of a fight it's like six on one. He's in broad daylight though, and he, he can probably tell that he's going to be recaptured. So he sees a car coming and he decides to step back onto the road and he purposely gets himself ran over in order to get saved and taken to hospital and get himself away from the professor and Berlin's crew. So, pretty big way to end the episode with the reveal that Wu Jin finds out that. The person she's been dating is the professor all along, and also that Mew Hook has escaped and he, he has purposely got himself ran over in order to get taken to the hospital and find out, you know, hopefully be able to, you know, regroup with his, um, with his team and tell them the information that he knows. And then finally, we're back inside the mint and Tokyo tells Berlin and the rest of the team that they're going to have to speed up their process. They're going to have to leave the mint quicker than they expected because she says, according to the professor's calculations, that they're going to have the summit pushed up till to, to tomorrow. 
So yeah, it gives them less than a day to, you know, print all the money they need and escape. So there you go, guys. I'm tr trying my best to remember it. From now on, I will be doing these reviews as soon as I watch the episode. I'm going to have to rewatch them all and do the reviews. But yeah, no, it's, it's, it's what you get when you when you decide to like just not upload some for like six weeks, two months. That's exactly what you get. But I thought it was a good episode. I, I did like it. You know, lots of stuff happening as well. Uh, big reveals at the end. It was exciting to see Tokyo get back inside the Mint as well. And um, yeah, lot, lots of good stuff. I feel like... The, I feel like the episode definitely ended better than it began. So, um, yeah, no, I felt like a lot of more exciting stuff happened towards the end of the episode. But it was good. Possibly the weakest episode in part two. But, I mean, that's that doesn't really mean anything because part two has been really good in my opinion. So, being the weakest episode so far is not necessarily a... You know, it's not really, really a criticism, it's just an observation. I would give this, um, oh, well, what am I going to give it? Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, guys. So, yeah, I'm going to give us a 7. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll be back over the next couple of days. We are going to wrap up part 2. So, you can expect to see episode 11 and episode 12. Both of those reviews will be on the channel over the next couple of days. We'll be making theory fids, possibly. Then we'll be looking to rank all the characters from the show. And if there's any news on a potential season 2, we'll be making content on that as well. So, there you go, guys. Fog Entertainment here, reviewing episode 10 of Money Heist Career. I enjoyed it. Give it a 7. Let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one. And, of course, until then, peace.